So whenever the stock market falls, retail investors get super excited and we start buying the dip left, right and center. Now, according to a recent survey that was done by Vanda Research, they approximated that retail investors are sitting on a loss of 32% on their entire portfolio in the recent sell-off. Now, this is a fairly big fall and this might make you question the notion around buying the dip. This viewpoint was echoed by Mr. Nitin Kamath's tweet also. He ended up saying that retail investors got saved inadvertently. So the word of the day today is inadvertently. Let me know what does that mean. The retail investors got lucky because they did not get demolished in the recent crypto crash. Why was that? Because the Indian government came out with stringent tax laws around cryptos. So a lot of retail investors did not end up purchasing cryptos or buying the dip in the crypto space. Now these viewpoints are very fascinating and they will make you question the entire logic of buying the dip. But this should also make you question the strategies that retail investors adopt in terms of buying stocks. Probably we make a mistake in terms of entering stocks too early or trying to buy every single dip that exists, so on and so forth. So probably our methodologies could be off. Now I cannot speak about all the investors out there, but at least in my case, the stocks that I had purchased from 2021 onwards, when the stock market started dipping, I'm sitting on a 5% loss on my portfolio. But if I compare this number to the average investor, it is around 32 as the research said. So I thought that why not share some of my strategies as to how am I buying the dip, whether I'm purchasing the dip still, and what would be the right mechanism of purchasing the current dip. So let us get the discussion started. I will make this video brief to the point. So number one, let us quickly understand what exactly is meant by buying the dip and should you be buying the dip in the first case. So buying the dip is a very simple concept which says that whenever the market falls, you should invest more money. So for example, on this particular chart of Nifty 50, you can clearly see that this is where the market started falling. So these are three different occasions when market fell quite aggressively. So if you are buying on these slopes, it would be considered as buying the dip. So should you be buying the dip? The short answer is yes, you should 100% be buying the dip because if you're not buying when the markets are falling and if you're only buying when markets are rising, how will you make money? So imagine this and let me zoom out the Nifty 50 chart. It will present a much cleaner story. Now, what you can clearly see is that in the long term, the Nifty 50 chart generally goes up. If you take a three year, five year, 10 year window, Nifty 50 will go up. There can be short term pain that probably there would be a couple of years when Nifty 50 or any index for that matter might not be giving out very good returns. But as long as you are investing in good indices or good stocks and whatever stuff you are purchasing during the downturn, that ends up giving you the most return. So imagine this and let us plot a couple of points here to just outline this story very, very clearly. So let us imagine point A to be this, point B to be this and point C to be this. And let's imagine that you invested 1000 rupees in each of these dips. Right. So where do you get to purchase the most amount or most units of Nifty 50? You will end up purchasing the most unit at point C because the market has fallen the most. And whenever the market rises, for example, let's say that the market rose eventually after two, three years to this point D, then which of these investment ends up giving you the most return? It is the investment or the SIP that you made at point number C. So the core message that I'm trying to deliver is that a falling market looks very, very scary for everyone. And yes, today you are investing in a falling market and tomorrow it might fall even more and day after it might fall even more and you might start panicking. But the fact remains that if you're purchasing good assets, those assets will come back up and the investments that you have made during a volatile or in a falling market or during a dip market, those are the ones that are likely to give you the most results. So therefore, buying the dip is critical and essential. If you end up investing somewhere here in point E, for example, this is where you invest all of your money when the markets are trading at an all time high and when the markets fall, that is where the actual pain exists. Right now, there is something called as margin of safety in the markets. Can it fall more? Absolutely. 100% it can fall more. No one can guarantee that the markets are not going to fall or markets are only going to fall by 10 more percent, all that stuff. No one can predict. But right now, as we are sitting and you can compute it here that how much the market has fallen from its top, there is a safety or margin of safety of roughly 13% on the index itself. So according to me, buying the dip even now is not a bad move. Am I buying the dip? 100%. I am buying the dip. Is it a recommendation from my side for you to end up investing in the market? The answer is no. And honestly, I don't want to debate people in the comment section that Akshat, you're wrong about this stock, that stock. 
folks please understand that the entire market has fallen by 13 14% the stocks that i keep talking about they will also fall because the entire market is falling that is the simple explanation that i will give you there that does not mean that these stocks have forever fallen and they will never rise up so on and so forth now with that viewpoint let us understand point number 2 which is as to how to buy the dip this is very very important and this is where majority of the people make a mistake why because their goal of buying the dip is not clear now there are two reasons why you should be buying the dip the first is called as momentum trading and you might be investing in the dip so let's pick an example and clarify this point so let's pick nifty 50 only and you saw that in the last 5 days nifty 50 has fallen by roughly 1.6% now you feel that you know what markets have come down they are definitely going to go up so tomorrow when the markets open i am going to invest a big chunk of money in the market and with what expectations you are going there you are going with the expectation that you are going to swing the nifty and you are going to make some money so you are going in with the expectation of doing a swing trading or doing a momentum trade that right now it is going down and your assumption is that this is the end of the dip from here the markets will start recovering and whatever money i am pouring tomorrow from day after onwards the market will start running now can you precisely predict the dip the answer is no you will not be able to do it you can apply any technical indicator right now markets are not functioning as per technical indicators here is a statement by mr vijay kedia that he made 0% returns on his portfolio in 2021 now his portfolio might be in a loss because in the last few days the markets have actually come down not gone up now if you use your brain and a little bit of logic you can easily figure out that if one of india's biggest investor is not able to figure out when the dip has ended and when the markets have completely corrected how can you and me figure that out the answer is that we can't figure it out so your assumption that okay i am going to swing the nifty very very easily that is incorrect unless you are willing to hold out your investment in the market during these volatile phases you are not going to make money now the second reason why people buy the dip is more sensible and the reason is that they are buying the dip because some good assets are available at a discount does this mean that the markets cannot fall further the answer is no markets can very well fall further no doubt about that but some good assets are available at a discount now these assets could be something like hindustan unilever it could be pd light it could be tcs it could be any stock that you like if the stock has corrected quite a bit and then if you are buying the dip on that stock it might make sense but with the expectation that you are okay holding that stock and you are okay holding and witnessing that volatility if you have zero patience in terms of holding a stock or holding a good cryptocurrency asset or holding a good real estate then you will not be able to make money every time the market shakes a little bit you will just sell your portfolio off and go away so please identify the reason as to why you are buying the dip if you are simply doing it for swing trading in several types of market swing trading is not working right now swing trading is not working no traders are able to consistently make money in this market that is the simple fact but yes if you are of the view that i am buying the dip so that i can get hold of some really good assets at decent enough prices and i am okay holding it off then this next section becomes important for you now let us understand couple of strategies to buy the dip what i am currently using and hopefully it might be useful for you so that you can mitigate some of your losses or if you are looking to build your portfolio in this market these strategies might come in handy so let me explain that first view point by taking you through the example of alibaba now let us take a look at alibaba stock from the moment i had made it so i had made this video on november 14th and if you check the prices around november so it was trading at roughly 130 140 so let's assume on the higher side 140 and right now it is trading at 113 hong kong dollar so total fall has been how much 20% right so now you will say that akshat your prediction was wrong you made 20% loss on alibaba no i am sitting on maybe like 3 or 4% loss on alibaba now you will say that okay how is that possible it is because of the fact that i am buying the dip and i am downward averaging a stock in which i am believing in so this brings us to the first key principle of buying any dip which is that please don't put all your money in one go for example a lot of people commented on yesterday's video that akshat you made a video on alibaba in november it was trading at 140 now there is like 20% loss on that stock we have gone bankrupt why did you go bankrupt on this because you ended up purchasing everything here if you had to invest let's say 1000 rupees on alibaba stock here you invested everything here i did not do that in fact if you go and check any of my videos and on several of my videos i have always spoken the fact that please split your amount in little little chunks for example if you go and check my analysis on something called as india bulls housing finance unfortunately that stock fell and i categorically told on that stock that hey we are swinging the market but unfortunately from november onward market started falling and i was only able to put one investment and i said that i am going to put 10 investments in that particular stock 
so anyways the first key critical lesson being that whenever you are investing in an asset especially in a growth tech company cryptos etc please chunk out your investments please invest in at least four installments if you are buying a dangerous stock for example india bulls housing finance i categorically said 10 installments so from that logic i have been buying alibaba since november and therefore my loss on the stock has been roughly like 3 4% which is very nominal given the fact that the entire world is grappling through inflation so many different different problems are happening and we are witnessing one of the very serious crashes out there so i hope this first strategy is clear now let me talk about the second strategy by picking the example of bitcoin and this is called as letting an asset consolidate so what is meant by consolidation let me take you to bitcoin chart now bitcoin from its top has corrected by roughly 50% but on a volatile asset like any growth stock for example amazon has also corrected by 40% approximately meta has corrected by 50 60% and there are a bunch of stocks that are considered to be growth stocks so these stocks start running very fast when the market starts to run and when the market consolidates or when the market falls these stocks are the ones that will fall the most so there is nothing to panic about on this front as long as you understand this basic point so coming to the topic of bitcoin you know that it is a volatile asset in case you are looking to build position or buy the dip in bitcoin then you should be purchasing something like bitcoin on consolidation points so for example you will see this zone where bitcoin is getting consolidated here it is getting consolidated this was a big consolidation zone and this is forming to be another big consolidation zone so let's assume that you had to put 10000 rupees in bitcoin and what would you do that when the market is at top would you go and invest all your money in bitcoin during that time the answer is no you should not be doing it so probably you would have purchased let's say 2000 rupees of bitcoin then here when the market started falling you should not have purchased it here you should have purchased it when the market consolidated again so here you could have purchased another 2000 then here again there was a big consolidation here so you could have purchased another 2000 then here again if you would have purchased bitcoin here then another 2000 and now you are left with 2000 rupee that you can further put in case the bitcoin falls more so from this particular perspective yes bitcoin has fallen by roughly 50% but how much would have been your loss just try to compute it run your mathematical model and tell me in the comment box and i can guarantee that to you that just by using this simple consolidation principle you could have saved a lot on your losses so this is a simple view point these are some of the points that i have explained on some of my earlier videos also it's not as if that i'm bringing it up for the first time but it hurts me a lot when people do not even watch the video they will just look at the thumbnail next day pour all their money on that stock stock market crypto market is supposed to be volatile if you are acting like a crazy person then you will end up absorbing the maximum loss that can happen on a particular asset so before i close out the video there are three critical points that i want to leave you with that number one buying a dip is good there is nothing wrong in terms of buying the dip i am also buying the dip but the important point is that you must buy the dip on assets that you have trust on this is not a push from my side to make you buy bitcoin or x asset or y asset please do your own research please buy assets that you have conviction in and buy only when you can handle volatility if you have no faith on your analysis and research you can give your money to mutual fund managers and by the way check their portfolio also you will be quite surprised so that is point 1 Point two, please understand the concept of systematic versus unsystematic risk. Systematic risk means that if the entire market is falling, you can't do anything. For example, if there is World War Three, then do you think that any market will be saved? The answer is no. That is a systematic risk, so to say. You can't diversify that through your good investment strategies. Everything will fall if such a situation comes up. But what about unsystematic risk? Unsystematic risk means that you are sensible enough in terms of applying hedging strategies, in terms of understanding how to buy the dip on consolidation. These are basic basic points that you must incorporate in terms of your investment strategy. Because if you go crazy that you have identified like some great asset, I am going to pour all my money in it. That's a really really bad move. So this is point number two. Point number three. Please be responsible for your own money. You don't need to listen to me or some other YouTuber or some other person or xyz minister from india you don't need to do that you need to trust your judgment at the end of the day because it is you who will be pressing the buy button or sell button on stocks or cryptocurrencies in whichever asset you choose to invest also a very quick note some of you have been reaching out and saying that akshat you know what world is not accepting inr deposit is there something that we can do so number one this is an exchange specific problem that is happening with majority of the exchanges in india 
you are not being allowed to, to transfer money from your Indian bank account to that crypto exchange. So this is something that the teams are already working on. Meanwhile, can you do something? Yes, please go and use Binance. You can use peer-to-peer -peer transaction in terms of buying and selling cryptocurrencies. Now, again, please be responsible yourself. If you don't know how P2P buying and selling works, and if you just listen to me, please do not put the blame on me that you know what, Akshat, I made like some incorrect entry in terms of sending money to someone. Please be responsible, please read instructions and please follow along. There is no scam that is going around in crypto exchanges. It is a simple back-end problem in which banks are not allowing crypto exchanges to use their infrastructure, so to say. So this is simply what is happening. So I hope you found this video to be useful, insightful, and I really, really wish that you listen, make notes. Investing is a serious game and you would take it seriously. Thank you so much and I will see you soon.